I believe that tonight that God has once again been, been good and has given me something to say. And not giving me something to say because I need to say it, or not, not giving me something to say because, because, well, just so I can fill time, but giving me something to say because we as the body need to hear it. Um, on Sunday morning, I talked to you guys about, um, about that like, you are exceptional. And the fact, the fact of the matter is that all of us in this room are really, really exceptional at something. There's something in your life that you are excellent and wonderful at. There's something in your life that you're excellent and wonderful at, and that thing that you're excellent and wonderful at, you're supposed to bring that to the house of God. You're supposed to use that to serve God, and ultimately, in doing that, you make God more famous. So one thing I like to say a lot is that, is that the best way, that we should, the, the way that we should live our life is by honoring God. And I try every day to live my life in such a way that everything I do honors God. And so one of the best ways to honor God with your life is, is this, to find out what it is that you are meant to do, to find out the thing, the reason that you were created to be. You, the, the number one way we honor God with our life is by finding out and doing what God created us to do. So I want to show you guys the picture really quickly. This picture, get it up there, was made by an artist by the name of Haven Snodgrass. And Haven gave me this picture a couple of days in the daycare, a couple of days ago in the daycare, and I immediately hung it up because this picture is a masterpiece. This picture is a beautiful creation. This picture is amazing, and it's only amazing because Haven made it. I look at that picture. I have no clue what's going on in it. I have no clue what it means. I have no clue the purpose of it. But every time I look at it, what it screams to me is this, is that this picture was made by Haven Snodgrass. And anytime anyone walks into the office in the daycare and they see it, they go, what is that? I go, Haven Snodgrass made this picture for me. This picture is doing what it was created to do. And that is, it was created to bring fame to the artist. It was created to make the artist well known. We don't know her. We will never know anything about her. But this picture, from whenever I'm going to post this picture on Facebook later, and you're going to know that a six-year-old girl named Haven Snodgrass made that. You have no clue who she is, but just because she made it, it has made her famous. And we are created masterpieces by God. So the fact that we exist should make God famous. The fact that we are who we are, that you look the way you look, that you smell the way you smell, that you talk the way you talk, everything you do is just a way of saying, look at the awesome thing my God has made. But God has also made us to look and declare his fame, but he created us all with a purpose. He created us all with the purpose, on purpose, and for a purpose. We have to find out what our purpose is. In American culture, we're really good at saying, I want to know why I was created. I want to find out who I am. I want to find out why I was born. I want to find out what it is I was made to do. And we're, we value that so much in American culture. But that has created generations of people walking around trying to find themselves. They're, they're trying to find out, what was I meant to do? They, 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 try, they go to college. They take adventures. They take trips. They write books. And they all, they all ask the same question. Who am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? And they never go to the source. They never go to who, where we know to go to find out who we were, to find out what we, were meant to, what, what we were meant to do and how we're supposed to do that. They never go to God, so they spend their lives, in American culture, we spend our lives just asking the question, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? We circle around this all the time. Who am I? We change our hair. Who am I? We change our looks. Who am I? We go on diets. Who am I? We start eating a lot of food. We go on diets. We change jobs. We do everything possible just to answer the question, who am I? But we often neglect to go to the source. We often, often neglect to go to God. And the only way you will find out who you were meant to be is by going to God. The only way you'll find out what your purpose is in life is by going to God. So... We all have a purpose. We were all meant to be something, and being something will take us closer and closer to God. But the problem is, in this room, we think that some bees are more important than other bees. That is, we think that maybe if um, in the kingdom of God, maybe if I were a pastor, 
then I'm more important, then I'd be more important than I, I, if I were just a good mom or a good dad. We think if I worked in a church, if I led worship, if I stood in the crowds before millions, I would be more important than a Sunday school teacher. We think that if I were the bishop, if I were, if I were the big head man in charge, if I were on the stage all the time, if I could sing, if I could dance, if I could do something that got me notable credit, then I would be more important. But the thing is, the truth is that to God, when we do whatever it is he's called us to do, when we do whatever it is he created us to be, then we're giving him the best of our best. We're being who he made us to be, so we're honoring him, we're making him famous in the best way when we just be who we are. No bees are more important than the other bees. It'd be great if the whole world were made up of phenomenal pastors, but bad parents. That wouldn't be good. The whole world made up of great singers, but no one to welcome people in the front door. That wouldn't be good. The whole world was made up with great musicians, great ushers, great everything, but no one to carry the love of Christ. That wouldn't be good at all. So whoever God created you to be, be that and be the best at it. So we know that. That's simple. We know that God created us, created us for a person, purpose. And we know in this room that the only way that we're going to find out what we're meant to do and who we're meant to be is by going to God the source. So I'm not going to cover that anymore. I'm not going to talk about that all night. I'm going to talk about something different. I want to ask this question. What stops us from being that? Can we pray real quick? God, I thank you for this night. I thank you for the words that you have placed on my heart, that you've put in my head, Lord. So I pray that you would use my voice and you would say your truth. I pray, God, that, you would, that our ears would be open and ready to hear from you, from me to the person all the way in the back, the people in the media booth, God, to the people watching online, Lord. I pray that our ears would be open and we'll be ready to hear what you would say to us. And God, after we've heard this word, Lord, I pray that you would just wash our hearts and our minds and change our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So, like I said, I'm not going to talk to you guys about who you're supposed to be. Because you know that you're supposed to be something. You know that God made you for a purpose. I want to ask the question of what stops us from being who God created us to be. The first one's really simple. It's this word called comparison. Everyone say comparison. 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 That's where I look at you and I compare my life to you. The crazy thing about comparison is that when I set myself up to compare, I either do, we all do this, we do either one or two things. I look at Jeff, and I'm going to compare myself to Jeff, and I either go, man, compared to Jeff, I suck. Or I go, compared to Jeff, I'm totally amazing. I look at Daniel, I go, Daniel, compared to Daniel, I'm the worst. But I look at Daniel, man, compared to Daniel, I'm pretty good. Dang, it's nothing, you know? So we do this delusional thing. We're either the greatest ever known or we're the worst of the worst. That's what it's like when we compare ourselves, and that is nothing but setting ourselves up for failure. As a matter of fact, um, you have that verse up there, Galatians 6, 4. Paul says it this way. Paul says in Galatians 6, 4, I can change it up here if you guys don't have it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. Here it goes. It says... Paul says, pay careful attention to your own work, for then you'll get satisfaction of a job well done. You won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. What Paul is saying here in Galatians, what the church of Galatians were doing, they were looking at each other and they were going, ooh, your sin's worse than my sin, so I'm good. Or my sin's worse than your sin, or yeah, my sin's worse than your sin, then I'm, then I'm bad. What Paul is saying, listen, don't waste your time comparing. Don't waste your time looking at Johnny or Susie or Linda or Paula. Don't waste your time doing that. Make yourself concerned with yourself alone. And then... You won't, have, you won't need to compare yourself. Do everything that you can do to the best of your ability. Then you won't have time to waste comparing, comparing yourself. You won't have time to stand around comparing yourself and looking, and looking at what someone else does. And then you can truly be, you can truly do what God created you can do. He's saying to the church of Galatians, once you stop comparing yourself, you can truly be who God made you to be. So comparison, that's a bad thing. Comparison is a bad thing, but there is something worse. There's something 
further that stops us from being everything who God wants us to be, and that is that our mirror is dirty. I hate it when I go to look in the mirror. Just did a really good job of cleaning this thing. But I hate it when I look in the mirror, and um, what I see back is like smudges. So I have kids, right? And so I think that everything I wear has some kind of throw up on it or some kind of baby, some kind of baby mark or some kind of food stain because I look in the mirror often, and in my mirror is toothpaste, soap, all the kind of stuff that you guys don't have to deal with but with little kids. Jackson loves to stand on the counter and splash water at the mirror, and I hate to clean the mirror. So that's what I see every morning. I see that, but the truth is there's something in all of us that makes us not like what we see when we look in the proverbial mirror of life. And what happens is, with that brush at, Josh? Here you go. What happens is when we look in our mirror, we don't just see the mirror. We don't see the person, the man or the woman that God created. We see this. We see a mirror, and our mirror's a little dirty. Our life has hit us, and we have our sins, our baggage. We have that divorce. We have that failure. Can you guys see that over there? When we look at the mirror, we don't see God's perfect creation, but we're trying to see who God made, and it's filtered through all this junk and all this dirt. So there's no way I can look in this mirror and see myself clearly because all I see is the dirt of my life. All I see is my failures, my mistakes, every time time I've messed up. All I see when I look in this mirror is every way possible that I have made a mistake. So there's no way I can look in this mirror and go, yay, I can be exactly who God wants me to be. I'm going to do everything God wants me to do because when I look in this mirror, I see trash. In the book of Exodus, we find this mirror moment. You guys, who here have heard of Moses? You guys heard of Moses? You know his story? Let me set this up for you just in case you don't know the story of Moses. Moses was an Israelite, and when he was born, the king, um, sorry, Moses was an Israelite born into slavery. So when he was born, the Pharaoh, that's what they call him, the Pharaoh said, let's kill every boy born. And because, because, of, because, we, because he knew that something great was going to happen, was going to happen when a little baby boy was born. So he said, let's kill every baby boy born. So Moses is born, and his mom said, I'm going to hide you in this bush. I'm going to push you down the river. So Moses was born, he was pushed down a river, and he was hidden. He was hidden by put, being pushed down a river. And his, his crib, his boat, his flotation device just happened to land right at the Pharaoh's gate. You guys know the story. I can speed up a little bit. So it lands at the Pharaoh's gate. So the Pharaoh's daughter raises him, finds him, sends him back to his mother, lets his mother raise him. And then when he comes to a good age, she sends him back to the Pharaoh's house. So Moses, this Israelite, born to slavery, who's supposed to be dead, finds himself now being born and living and being raised in the Pharaoh's house. He's an Israelite being raised as an Egyptian, a slave being raised as a king. He is this person who, so, so fast forward, so he walks out one day and he, as an as an, as a, as Israelite, he walks out and he sees some mistreatment going to his fellow people because he he's, has Egyptian status, but he's really a slave. So he sees mishandling happening with the slaves, so he gets really mad about it, so he kills somebody. Then he runs away because he's done something bad, and he finds himself in this, he finds himself in this foreign land. Now he's married to this lady, and he finds himself tending to the sheep and the goats of his father-in-law Jethro. He's tending to the sheep and the goats, and one day in the distance, he sees this bush that's burning. And this is the moment where he has to look himself in the mirror. Here it is. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. The burning bush happens in in, um, God says to Moses, then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their sufferings. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land full with milk and honey, the land where Canaanites, Hittites, all those other types, blah, 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 live. Now look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me. 
And I've, and I've seen how hard the Egyptians abused him. Now go, God's talking to Moses, he says, Now go, for I'm sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God. Who, Moses protested to God, Who am I? Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of, to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I'm with you. The, I'm the one who sent you. When you have been brought the people out of Israel, you will worship God at, the very, at this very moment, at this very mountain. Let's pause there. Josh is going to help me. Here it is, the burning bush. God appears to Moses, knowing that Moses is now 80 years old, has some abandonment issues by trying to be killed, he has some issues because he was, he was a slave raised in the king's house, so the slaves didn't understand him, and the other, fair, the other Egyptians didn't understand him. So here he is, he's now killed somebody, and the people who were defending by killing someone rejected him. So now he's run away, he's in a foreign land, he marries some strange woman, he, he names his first son that this is a child of a foreign land. So here he is now, and God is talking to him through a bush, but hasn't been consumed. Let me see that stuff. I'm going to trade roles. Actually, we're not going to trade roles. We're going to do this. So God is talking to Moses, and God says, Moses, as I talk, you just clean that mirror off. Because here's what God's doing. God is trying to clean Moses' mirror. And he says, Moses, I've heard my people. And the good thing is, I know how harshly they've been treated, but I'm sending you. I'm sending you to take them to this amazing place. I'm sending you to deliver them out of slavery. I'm sending you to take them to a land flowing with milk and honey. I'm sending you to save the day. And God is cleaning Moses' mirror. You got to clean faster than that, buddy. You got to clean. Here, let's, let's help him. Jeff, come help him clean this mirror. This is not going to work. I know. And so as God is cleaning this mirror, go, go a little faster, you're going to mess up my illustration. Not really. Um, the mud can't settle. This is, Pastor, if, this is, if, Holly, if you're watching this, Holly, I'll pay for the mirror if it gets broken or damaged. Um, so as Moses, as God is cleaning Moses' mirror, right, Moses stops and says, but God, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I, God? You know, I have these abandonment issues. I, I, I killed a guy, God. I, I messed up badly. Who, who, am I to, who am I to deliver your people? And God says, listen, listen, no, it's okay, because they will know who sent you. They will know that I have a plan. They will know I'm sending you myself. I'm sending you with my stamp and my approval. I, am, I prepared this way for you. I am protecting you. You're being sent by me. And God continues to clean the mirror, but Moses contests once again. He says, but God. I can't talk. I can't speak. You know, I have this, this, this stutter going on. And, and you know, they're going to look at me and think I'm weird. They're going to look at me and think I'm, think I'm strange. Yeah, Moses can't see what God is telling him. Moses can't see that God is telling him, this is your moment. This is who I created you to be. All Moses sees is his past his failures, his mistakes. And he says, Mother says, God, listen, they're not going to believe me. They're not, gonna, they're not even going even to want to hear me. There's nothing good going to happen. Is God says, listen, Moses, when they ask you who sent you, I said, they're not going to believe me. They don't know who I am. God says, tell them that I am, that I am sent you. It's a funny illustration, but don't you know that we're Moses, that we sit in churches, we sit in worship services, we read our Bibles, and God says, we hear, God loves you, you're sin the forgiven, you're perfect, you're wonderful, you're beautiful, you've been made to do something great, and we go, but God, 15 years ago, I, I cheated on my taxes, but God, really, when I was in high school, I had that drug problem. I had that drinking problem. And God says, no, 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 listen, I love you. I created you to do great and marvelous things. I created you on purpose. You can do this. You are my son. You are my daughter. And, he, and God just constantly cleans our mirror. He constantly tries to get us to see who he created us to be. He tries to get us to see the man in the mirror without the stains. 
I'm not new sin. I'm not talking about the God cleans your mirror and you walk out of the service and you commit a student sin. No, what the dumb thing we do is we know that God's forgiven us, and then we go, God forgave me of those sins, but man, I'm nothing but that same old person I was back then. I'm nothing but my past sins. So we don't throw new stains on our mirror. We just content, consistently just paint it. With our old sins, this is so frustrating. I know. Imagine how God feels. How ridiculous are we when the creator of the universe tries so hard to tell us, no, you are not that bad. No, you have been forgiven. No, you can do this. And we go, God, I can't. I can't be a good dad. I can't be a good mom. I can't be faithful to church. I can't teach a Sunday school class. I can't sing. I can't do anything because in my past, I was this. In my past, I did this. And we never were never able to see ourselves the way God created us. We're never made to see ourselves the way God made us to be. And therefore, if I have a distorted view of the man in the mirror, and ultimately, I don't bring my God fame. Because if God created me to be the best dad in the whole wide world, and all I see is my abandonment issues, then no matter how awesome God's created my kids, no matter how awesome God speaks to me, all I see, I can't see myself clearly. Because we keep on making our mirrors dirty. That's what Moses did. That's what Moses did. Moses just said, God, you're incredible. You're making this bush burn in front of me. It's not even going away. And he comes up with an excuse every time. Just throw more dirt on the mirror. That's what you and I do. Our goal in life, our purpose in life, is just to be who God created us to be to do what God created us to do. Then we bring him fame, we bring him glory, we advance his kingdom, and we make heaven crowded. But as long as we keep slinging mirror, slinging mud on the mirror, we're doing nothing. So, can we do? Can, can we do? Can we be a little practical? Can we be a little? Can, can we be, be a little silly for a second? Um, Sandy, come here. Sandy Brown, come here. Because I think I shared this thought with you. I shared it with you or, or Kathy a few like like last year. Sometimes this thought of a dirty mirror. So, Sandy, I want you to. Look at yourself. Well, Josh, get that mirror clean. Get that mirror clean really good. Because Sandy needs to see herself in the mirror the way God created her. And then, Josh, you're so smart. And then I'm going to throw some of Sandy's dirt on the mirror. And then I want, I want you to see, Sandy, what God does to you, for you, when you throw dirt on your own mirror. All of our mirrors are dirty. All of our mirrors are filthy and nasty, but we have a God who is faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So look at this mirror, Sandy. And now this mirror is clean as clean as you can get it. And what you see in this mirror is a woman of God, a daughter of God, who God created to do amazing things, to be amazing organizer, to be an amazing team gatherer, to be amazing structurist, to be amazing planner, to be an amazing person all together. God created you with every one of those gifts and every one of those talents for you to be wonderful and excellent at it. And so many times, you are. But then those, those days where you remind yourself, I'm dirty. I used to be dirty. Now, can you see yourself clearly in that mirror, Sandy? No, not really. So if you were looking at that and trying to define who God made you to be, could you do it? 
Josh, show us what God does. God just cleans our mirror. And he reminds us that you're loved. Now you weren't just, you're not an accident that before you were even in your mom's room, he put you together, he knit you together in your mother's room. Before you took your first breath, he had plans for you that he knows the plans he has for you. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And anytime we see ourselves other than who God made us, after we come to Christ, anytime we see ourselves as dirty and filthy, then we've missed God. Because the Bible says that he washes us white as snow. White as snow. And I believe that, um, that the, the kind of soap and water and scrubbing towels that God used, he put the little clear coat on us so we're not dirty anymore. So that when he has washed you white as snow, the only thing you ever are is who God made you to be. And look at this. When you look in that mirror, the reflection that everyone sees makes God famous. What's your mirror look like? Thank you, Sandy. What's your mirror look like? Natalie, come look at yourself in the mirror. Come look at the woman that God created you to be. Come figure out who God made you to be. Yeah, look in the mirror right there. In real life, in real life. This, it's, it's 7.53. I got you guys until 8.20. Listen, God makes us wonderful. It's a shame that we look at ourselves and we, we, we just mess it all up. God says you're clean, you're forgiven, you're, your sins have been washed away, and you go, I don't know. Uh, get on you, I'm sorry, that's poop water, too. Um, God says you're perfect and excellent, and we smudge up our mirrors. I'm done. I'm done. Clean that mirror off, Josh. <laughs> this is what I want you to know. This is what I want you to, to realize. But in order for you to be who God created you to be and to do what God has created you to do, you have to let God clean your mirror and then keep it clean. Moses let God clean his mirror enough. And throughout his entire life, after he led the people of Israel out of the water, there were moments where Moses' mirror was really clean. And Moses really knew that, yeah, God's with me. God showed me what to do. And then there was moments where Moses threw some mud back on the mirror. And again, God cleaned it up. And eventually, because Moses let God clean the mirror, eventually the people made it to the promised land. When you let God clean your mirror, what God created you to do will happen. May not happen in your lifetime. May not happen by just your hands. But it will happen. If God created you to be the catalyst to bring salvation to your family, and you don't have a clean mirror, you don't keep throwing mud on your mirror, then your family will never be saved. But if you see yourself the way God sees you, and you look at the man and the woman that God created you to be, and you be that person, they may not all get it, get it before you die, but they will get it. And your family will see the salvation of the Lord. What's God created you to do? Who has he created you to be? You know where to go to find that out. Why can you see yourself the way he made you? Stop comparing yourself to other people and let him and keep your mirror clean. Let's pray. Well, God, I thank you because even as I speak this message tonight, you're convicting myself. You're convicting me to keep my mirror clean. You're convicting me, Lord, in this moment to forget the past. Old things are passed away. 
Let that conviction rest and fall on all of us. Let the old things have passed away, and you have made us new. So when we see ourselves in the mirror, we see who you've made us to be. You see who you created perfectly and wonderfully. Excellently and wonderfully, Lord. For a purpose, own purpose, God. Let us not be deluded. Let us not be fall into the trap that the enemy tries to tell us that we're nothing. Let's not fall into the enemy's trap of reminding us over and over again of all the things we've done wrong. Remind us over and over again all the ways we fail. But God, let us continually see ourselves the way you created us to be. Let us speak the names that you've spoken over us, Lord. That we're chosen, that we're not forsaken, that we're loved, Lord. That we're not failures, that we're not mistakes. We're chosen people, fearfully and wonderfully made. So that we can be who you made us to be. And do what you created us to do. So that on that day, when we stand before us, you can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. That's what we want, Lord. We just want to hear well done. So God, help us to live and be who you made us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what I want to do. This mirror's going to stay here. And if you need to look at yourself in the mirror and remind yourself who God created you to be, take all the time you need. If you need to play around and, and throw some mud, bring that, bring that back, boy. If you need to play around <laughs> and, and throw some mud on the mirror, Josh will stay here and he'll clean it up for you. But seriously, um, I mean, the Lord is good. We have a faithful Lord who doesn't make any mistakes, doesn't make any accidents. He doesn't, we're not just random beings here for no reason. All of us have something to do that will advance his kingdom and make him famous. And if you believe that God wants anything other than your worship, that he wants you to be successful. He does want you to be successful, but that's not as important to him as every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. You can be a millionaire, you can be a poor folk, but if you make God famous, if you worship God, if you advance his kingdom, then you're here well done. You guys better go. I'll keep praying. I'll keep preaching. Love you guys. Come look in the mirror, come play some music.